You feel that? <laughs> Sorry, I just got a little bit of energy today. The sun is shining, and I just had a fucking mandarin orange, I think. I feel like going for a mountain bike ride. I feel like going rollerblading. I feel like going outside and just dance around in my Speedos. I don't own any Speedos, but you get the point. I'm Colin Key. What's up? Welcome back. This is episode three of the I Hate Tipping Podcast. <coughs> I appreciate you coming back. I love that you came back. Thank you for coming back. Um, I hate tipping. And I'm going to do a whole episode on that. Coming soon. But until then. Here's what we're going to get into today. Alright. First on the block. The chopping block. A couple of quick show notes excuse me so as I said before in the past episodes this is a learning experience and a growing experience this is all new to me and I'm going to try to improve every single episode for y'all my throat's still a little shitty I'm going to get some exercise in pretty soon and hopefully that'll help clear out all the gunk maybe this weekend uh, fuck I got my kid this weekend but I don't know, maybe I'll take his badass with me and go to the, to the track up at the high school and do some running or something, get some, get, get the fluid out of my knees and the, and the, the, the fucking whatever the hell's going on with my back and my shoulder and my ankle and, and my other knee and my elbow, uh, rolling again so I can not feel my age. <clears throat> so anyway, yep. Some show notes. As we're moving along, I decided, number one, that I'm going to do this twice a week. So it's either going to be, it's going to be a twice a week show. That's two days a week. Um, either Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Friday. One of those combinations. You get the point. Two shows a week is what I decided on because I figure I have the time. I have the, 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 the technology <laughs> I have I can talk twice for an hour twice a week no problem I got enough shit written down that I want to talk about so that's what I decided twice a week <clears throat> I also decided not I had said before in episode one that I was going to use the email from my publishing company get some publishing for the show, but now I said that's not professional. I'm gonna go ahead and I all right, I already did. I set up an uh, email account for this show specifically, and it goes like this: I hate tipping at aol dot com. I h a t e t i p p i n g at symbol aol dot c o m. <clears throat> Comments, questions, suggestions, shout outs, whatever you want to do. Love to hear from you. If you just want to let me know that you're listening, I would love that. Um, if you want to tell me to go fuck myself, hey, it, it, it lets me know you're listening. So that's the official email. You can also find me on Facebook. Just type in Colin Key. You'll see the face that's on the, the same one that's on the front of my book, or it says from Philadelphia. I think I'd be the only one there. I, I Googled or I Facebook searched it, and that's what popped up. Um, you can hit me up on there. Anything you want to say? I'm open like a book. Um, speaking of books, let me go ahead and throw in the plug. The book is called These Ones Are Mine. It's my debut nonfiction true story whamma jamma. It's full of craziness and offensive language and sex and violence and fights and cops and stories about doing drugs and uh, slow speed car chases and almost sliding off of mountains in Switzerland and uh, being stranded in the middle of a white neighborhood and being surrounded by hillbillies by myself um, who had murderous intentions, I'm pretty sure, and just uh, racism and um, just 
of how I grew up and being afraid growing up and people I knew that did stuff and other people who are dead now. It's just all sorts of crazy. It's not depressing. I don't, I, that sounded depressing. It's actually pretty funny a lot of the time, I think, <clears throat> from what I hear. Um, there's stripper stories and there's prostitute stories and there's stories about me selling my hair to be used in a movie. It's all kind of stories. Um, there's like 200 of them or more. Uh, you should check it out. It's on Amazon and Kindle. It's called These Ones Are Mine. I appreciate the support. Um, if you do get it, please, please, I need some feedback from somebody. I have a little bit of feedback from people that I knew, friends and family and stuff. I, I, I really want to hear from somebody. Tell me it's a piece of shit. Tell me I should keep my day job. Tell me it's great. Tell me you laugh. Tell me you, you hate me because of some, something I said. Whatever. Just read it and say something so that I know that... Um, that somebody's reading it <clears throat> because I, I really put my ass into it. All right. Uh, next up. So, oh yeah, I also decided I'm going to do a bunch of giveaways. I, whenever I first published my book, I got so excited that I went and, uh, I went on Vista print and I ordered t-shirts and I ordered, um, ink pens and, and, uh, mouse pad and shit like that with the logo from the book on it. And I gave that shit away already. And I'm going to get some more. And I'm going to get some more copies of the book. I already gave away a bunch of copies of the book that I had printed for myself to give away. I'm going to get some more to give away for listeners of this show if I ever get any subscriptions. <clears throat> and all you have to do to randomly win a prize, some sh- some swag, a shirt, a pen, something, you know, it's going to be random. And I'm going to pick randomly is just shoot me an email and say something give me a comment whatever like i said tell me go fuck myself if you if you feel a way about something that i said let's have a conversation or if you don't give a fuck about having a conversation you're gonna tell me i cuss too much whatever just shoot me an email with your name and i will pick random people as soon as i get some swag in and you win and i'll send it i'll pay for shipping all that stuff just to uh say thanks for listening <clears throat> All right. Oh, and that'll include copies of the book too. Um, for people who are interested, if you're interested in a copy of winning a copy of the book, in the email say I'm interested in winning a copy of the book, or I'd like to read the book, or I I bought the book, I like the book, I'd like a T-shirt, or whatever. Just say something. I don't care. And uh, I'm gonna give away some. I'm gonna get a few, a bunch of copies of the book and a bunch of T-shirts and shit like that. And you could win. Uh, okay. Episode breakdown. So today, <clears throat> damn, my throat. let me get some water in. Hold on. I know I should probably turn away from the microphone when I'm clearing my throat. I'm going to work on it. <sighs> Hydrate people. It's just, it's just great for you. All right. So what I plan on talking about today, uh, first I'm going to do a true story, a uh, quick true story. Uh, then I'm going to do the segment um, that I decided to call let's move forward. That's like in the previous, in episode two, I talked about, um, ATM machines and public restrooms and remote, what, what TV remotes and cold weather climate cars with automatic heat, shit like that stuff that needs to exist in the world already because, um, it's 2017 and we're behind in a lot of areas, I believe. So I'm, I'm, that's the segment so far I decided on. Uh, let's move forward. Hey, if you have a better name for the segment, email me and let me know. But right now, I was going to say fix the world, but that's too broad. I decided on for now, let's move forward. Or maybe um, call it back to the future. I don't know, because we should be so much further forward as a species being the year and how long people have been existent in existence on this planet. So uh, let's move forward. So a true story, quick true story. Let's move forward. Uh, I'm going to do another sec- segment that I decided on called You're an Asshole. If uh, I'm going to do a, another segment that I decided on that I haven't done yet called Recent Music that I found. Uh, I'm going to do a quick hygiene tip. Obviously, that's going to be every episode. Um, another one that's going to be every episode is uh, a champion beauty of the world. Uh, female talking about female woman, human, 
beautiful woman that uh, I find beautiful. A f- famous, you know, because there's always the chick in the hood who looks just as good as whoever on TV. But this is just famous chicks that we're all familiar with that fascinate me for whatever reason. I'm going to talk about one every episode. Or maybe not. Maybe that's fucking creepy. I don't know. But I got a few in mind that I just want to throw a general shout out. Um, <clears throat> so I have one for picked out for today. Then I'm going to get into a more serious topic, something that, uh, uh, you know, affects us all, I believe. And I'm going to talk about something I bought recently. And that is all I have to say about that. So that's the breakdown of the show. True story. Let's move forward. You're an asshole. Recent music. Hygiene tip. Champion beauty. Serious topic. Something I brought recently. And let's jump right into it. All right. True story. Sorry. I was at a gas station once on my motorcycle on my way to a uh, poker game at my uncle's house. And as I was pumped, I put the damn thing in the in the, the pump nozzle into the gas thing and squeezed it. And as I was pumping gas, I turned and just happened to look in the direction of the door to the gas station. And some dude, some just regular old black dude with gla- sunglasses on, skinny brown skin dude, came walking out of the door took it to his car toward me and his car was parked on the other side of the pump that I was on. And I looked at him and then I looked away and then I looked back at him. Uh, Oh shit. Excuse me. And when I looked back at him, he looked up at me and then he just stared at me. And then I remember thinking to myself, ah, fuck, I hate how black dudes, me included, we all end up just gritting on each other all the time. We just stare at each other like threateningly, like what the fuck are you looking at? And he looked at me like, what the fuck are you looking at? And I admit to admit, admit to myself and to everybody that I was looking at him, but I wasn't looking at him like that, like fuck you, you know, who, what the fuck? I was looking at him. I got caught looking at him the second time trying to see if I knew him. So sometimes you look at somebody and then you just, you, it doesn't, they don't register and you look away. So other times you look at someone and you're like, wait, where do I know this person from? Well, that's what happened with this dude. But I didn't even realize that I was doing that. Like I looked at him, looked away and then I was looking at him, but I wasn't even thinking I was just looking at him and he looked at me and he just said, he said, you all right, man. And I said, what? <clears throat> and he said, you all right? I said, yeah, what do you mean? He was like, I'm just saying. I mean, you looking. You Is everything all right? You all right? And I was like, what? And he's like, Psh, whatever. And he walked away. and got, Or he just walked past me looking at me like, what the fuck you want to do? And I just stared at him. And I got furious. Like, immediately I was like, what the, man, fuck this dude. What the fuck? And he just got in his car and drove away. And I was thinking to myself, like, I was so mad. I was like, yeah, I was confrontation ready. Like. All right, well, if it's like that, then what do you want to do? But I didn't say it because I figured he was he was a lot smaller than me and skinny, and and I figured he probably had a gun or something, or maybe he was just fearless. I don't know. Maybe he was a fighter and would whoop my ass. I don't know. But I didn't say anything else, and he drove away. And but then and then I went to my poker game, and I was thinking about that 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 that. Um, not confrontation. It wasn't a confrontation, but the situation, whatever you want to call that for the rest of the night through the poker game, through the ride home, drunk riding home from the poker game. I was just, I think it even affected me to where I lost a lot of money in the game. I was just so fucking pissed at the dude. I was cause it wasn't even that what he had said. It was just that uh, I hate that thing where, like I said, black dudes look at other black dudes they call it gritting on each other. Like I ride through the hood and when black dudes look at me, it's like, like a threatening look, like fuck you. <laughs> and it, and it, that is, that is not a hundred percent of the time, but most of the time when you ride through any like predominantly black area or walk through, you walk past people's houses, they look at you like, what the fuck are you looking at? It's like a meanness. And that, the fact that that exists in the black culture 
bothers the fuck out of me. And so that stuck with me for a long time this, with this thing with this dude. And I felt like, what the fuck him? Like, I wasn't, I wasn't gritting on him when I was looking at him. I was looking at him like, do I know this dude? Anyway, long story short, well, I guess long story long. Like a week later, it dawned on me where I knew that dude from. I did know that dude. I didn't know him, but I recognized him. <clears throat> and my brain caught on to him, but, I, but the memories didn't pop up. I saw that dude in a porn. <laughs> a few porns. There's a local dude that I know. Just an acquaintance. Just I don't know him, know him, but I've you know from places he's worked around, and I've talked to him a lot. He was making porns for a while with local people where I live, and his his porn videos circulated around, and I ended up watching a few of them. And I remember him saying to me specifically that he didn't have no problem. I was and I was you know super curious, like how the fuck did you get into this, and how you know where do you find girls? And he told me that. He didn't have any problem finding females for to make these videos. It was finding dudes willing to do it. That was the hard part. And that having that conversation with that dude is what clicked in my mind. And then I remember it. I was like, holy shit. That's why I was staring at that nigga. That excuse me, that N word, that whatever. I was staring at that dude at the gas station because I knew I had seen him in a porn. <laughs> And that just, I don't know, that cracks me up when I think about it. All right. Uh, moving on. What else? So there's nothing else to say about that except I'm going to do a, I have a lot to say about porn. I watched a lot of porn in my life, but that's going to be a whole conversation that I'm going to have with y'all on another episode. So moving on. Oh, in my show, and the show breakdown, I forgot to say that I wanted to talk about another movie that I've seen recently. That's always going to be every episode because I I see a lot of movies. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the movie I want to talk about is called Don't Breathe. This movie stars Stephen Lang. And if you don't know who he is, he's that diesel fucking muscly old white dude with like gray white hair who was an avatar. He was the military dude. Um, who Like the evil government. <laughs> military dude and I don't even know how else to describe him he was a dude at the end of Avatar who was who was just m- trying to murder the big, giant blue people like with robot suits at all costs he, he didn't give a flying fuck about their planet or their life he was just gonna kill them all for their oil or whatever the fuck they were fighting for him he was in this movie called Don't Breathe and without spoiling it I'll say that this movie is about him and he's in his house not bothering nobody and some young people start messing with him and the whole movie is about what happens when they mess with him um i'll say this he does not fuck around at all and they regret it (laughs) but in the end of the movie you you're going to be asking yourself so who was the bad guy in this Um, if you skipped it or didn't hear about it, you should definitely go and get it today. It's in the red box. It is a, 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 a from an A to an F. It is an A in my book. I've seen it multiple times, and I will probably still buy it. Uh, there's nothing I would change about it. It's great. It, it's suspenseful as all fuck. Um, like edge of your seat suspense. It's got twists and turns that you did not expect. Um, there's a comedian called. Uh, who named uh, J.L. Calvin. I used to watch his movie reviews on YouTube before he stopped doing them. And one of the last ones that he did was for this movie. And he said, this is his quote. He said, best use of semen in a movie. <laughs> and I'm going to second that emotion. Best use of semen. And then I'm going to throw in um, best use of a dog in a movie ever. There was there was a dog, some dog scenes in there. And that shit fucking fucked me up i was like damn that that was good the movie is great um it's got a crazy twist it's got a couple few crazy twists um there's action there's i don't want to say horror there's there's a lot of suspense um and that that's the genre as far as i'm concerned it's a suspense movie it's a it's not a horror movie there's no like ghost or 
fucking anything like that. But it, it's all real people in, in a real situation. But it is scary. It's it'll it'll um <clears throat> it's a psychological thriller. That's what it is. So check it out. It's called Don't Breathe. I would say buy it. If you buy movies and you haven't heard of it and didn't know, just buy it. Take my word for it. You won't regret it. It's a great movie. It's one of the best movies that I've seen uh, in the last few years. Right at the top. All right. Uh, next. All right. So let me talk about something I bought recently. <coughs> Damn it. My throat. I promise. I hope my throat's going to be better soon. It doesn't hurt or anything. I just have like c- congestion still. Damn it. I'm so glad the sunshine. I want to open the curtains, but. I think it's keeping some of the sound in. I don't want my neighbors uh, listening to me outside my window. I don't, I don't know them yet. I just moved here. <coughs> I'm not sure what uh, if they're uh, perverts or, or what. Uh, something I bought recently. Oh, where is it? Oh, I wrote it down. Okay, so if you're a coffee drinker, which I didn't used to be, but when I started working on my... Actually, no. I take that back. I start, I became a coffee drinker when I quit chewing i used to chew snuff i used to dip rather like grizzly and uh whatever else copenhagen and skull shit like that um and whenever i tried to quit or when i I just did i quit but i was going through withdrawals that was so hardcore i needed something uh, just something to put in my body to just distract me from what i was going through i mean that that was hardcore it had to be as strong as anything else, heroin or whatever. Like I was like shaking with the um, withdrawal from tobacco, and hot, st- really strong black coffee helped. Like it was like a miracle for me. But now I'm addicted to coffee. And then when I started writing my book two years ago, finding myself in co- you know I don't know why, but for some reason being in like a Starbucks or a Panera or something like that just um, just works. You go in, you get a coffee, and then you can just put on headphones and just zone out, or not even put on head- like you just weird. Like inside of a Starbucks is never a quiet place. Uh, excuse me, but for some reason you go and you sit down with your coffee and little fucking um, apple fritter or something, and you just go into this cocoon, and then you don't hear nothing. Like I, I used to. I'm telling you, over the last two years, I've spent thousands of hours inside of coffee shops writing my book and now i'm a regular full-blown coffee drinker and i also drink it at work at night when i drive my truck so i needed a i've gone through a few different coffee like travel mugs and for christmas i got well i actually i picked it out and uh told my little brother that i wanted it he asked me what i wanted i told him i had saw this on amazon it's called the contigo west loop travel mug it is that's c-o-n-t-i-g-o just type in contigo on amazon search uh thing uh contigo west loop vacuum insulated travel mug i got the 16 ounce one but they also have a 20 ounce one the 16 ounce one is the same size as a large coffee if you go in a gas station so it's perfect for me um that motherfucker does not spill I, I put my coffee in that thing and I, it has like a lock on the top and you hit it and, and I put it, I throw it in my book bag with my computer and shit. Like it does not spill. It does not leak. That, that's what I call it. Like vacuum sealed. And it says auto auto seal on, on the lid. <clears throat> so they have some serious funky technology going on in the thing. And then, so when you hold, and it looks awesome, it looks futuristic and just sexy. And it comes in like 88 different colors like the colors were like watermelon and polar white and latte and like snow piercer or some shit. I don't know. Like they have a lot of different colors and they all look awesome. Um, the thing cost the 16 ounce one cost 13 bucks. I love it. I've dropped it. It's made out of steel. It's it's sturdy. The when you hold it at the top, it it um like right where your index middle and ring finger are. There's like a long button that your fingers naturally just go straight onto and that's what you squeeze and then you put the thing to your mouth and there's a hole on the top and it automatically opens and closes as you squeeze it it's just well thought out it's it's well made it's 
good looking. I like futuristic looking shit. It's futuristic looking. It, they have options, different colors, different sizes. It's on Amazon. It's the price is good. Pick yourself one up, people, if you like the coffee. Okay, the next thing on the list is <clears throat> now. How can I do this? As I've said before, I'm new to this, so I'm gonna save that for the, no. I need to do this now. All right, I want to talk about a song for the segment, which is gonna be um music that I found recently because I'm always on the hunt for new music all the time. And I listen to a whole variety of different musics, which is going to be a, a whole subject on a future podcast. Uh, my history with music is pretty deep and long and hard and throbbing and f- can fill a void. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I need to figure, I have a clip from this song from this artist and I need to figure out how to put it in here. So what I'm going to do is, all right, listen to this. Relax, lighten the load of all the things that make me want to gag. Get rid of you and me and him and her and this and that. Kicking and screaming, pulling the things that make me happy, yes. Stay back. Just me and my cherry radio fly, yeah. Dreaming of all the ways we push That's Kilo Kish, K-I-L-O-K-I-S-H, two words, Kilo Kish. And if you listen, if you buy her album, the, I think the first song she talks about why she calls herself Kilo Kish. Her name is Lakeisha. But anyway, there's a whole story behind it, and it's, it's pretty pretty interesting. And anyway, this chick is different as hell, and I found her on Pandora. I was on another radio station on Pandora, and her song called Lock It popped up. And I was just like, damn, I loved it. And I was listening to that song on YouTube over and over and over. And of course, I was like, well, what else does she have? She released, um, I think her first actual album is called Reflections in Time. And I absolutely love it. I have listened to this album. I paid for I bought it and paid for it on iTunes. I've listened to it. It was like the only thing I listened to for about a month. Like I just listened to it over and over and over and over and over again. Her voice is beautiful. It's kind of like a little kid like you would think that she was like this little girl singing because her voice is like so like girly <laughs> but like childhood but at the same time she's not a little girl she's a woman but she just has this sweet ass voice and she does things with her voice that i've never heard anybody else do like she's a very aware of her voice and of and and has learned how to do things with it so if you listen to her album reflections in time it's so different from all the rest of this shit that's just coming out all the time on the radio. Like, I don't need to hear any more of anything on the radio. Like, they have a formula for what they know keeps people dialed into a certain radio station when they're at work. And that they just keep making that same song over and over and over again. This woman, I've heard her talk about it. And she said that she likes to sit down in front of the, the equipment and just get weird and that's why I love her, her shit so much. That's why she has me as a fan now, because her shit is not like anything else out there. Guaranteed. <clears throat> and um, she's very talented and I highly recommend the album. And she's also crazy. <laughs> I was listening to some of her early shit. And this is one song called Julianne. And this song is about her talking to her boyfriend and imagining, I believe it's about her imagining chopping him up with a butcher knife. Like, I can't, 
I'd have to I haven't listened to it in a while, but I remember just cracking up like, wow, this broad is nuts. Which, if you read my book, you'll find out has always been uh, something that's attractive to me. I always end up with the crazy ones. Um, yeah, and she's she's gorgeous too. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So that was. Um, oh, that song was called. What the hell is that song called? Anyway, it's on her album. Um, it's called. I don't know. All right, I should find out. It's called. I think it's called Fulfillment. Yes. Fulfillment. It's from her album, Reflections in Time. It's available on iTunes and all that shit right now. And uh, I'm not affiliated with her in any way. I'm just saying I like the music. And I'm going to try to share to you guys the stuff that I found recently that I like. So uh, check her out. All right. Next. <clears throat> all right. Oh, shit. I got a couple sound drops, but I need to edit them to get them... Um, the right length and shit and i'm gonna episode four i'm gonna throw in some sound drops i might if i can squeeze one in like post after i record and um when i'm editing i'll throw in a couple here because uh, but i need to edit them and shit but anyway i did as as promised i did get some and uh yeah so this next and i'm gonna use them for every segment so you know that oh okay now this is the uh you're all assholes segment so you'll know um, okay, so this is the let's move forward topic for the, for the day. If you remember last episode, what did I talk about? I don't remember. This episode, um, some things that I want to see happen sooner than later, just in this country and in the world in general, just as human beings, because we're far behind. Uh, a couple of things that just uh, were on my mind are as follows. Number one, telephone poles. <clears throat> um, here's another quick true story. Back when I was about 20 or something, I was standing out in front of my mom's house at night with a bunch of friends. And we were tossing a football back and forth in the dark. We were just it was we just started doing it just to see if we could do it by nightlight with the street lights. And we were doing OK. And it ended up going for a little bit longer than I thought it would. And then at one point, somebody threw me the ball. I took a few steps back, said, go long, lean way back, launched the motherfucking ball as hard as I could. It took the fuck off like a rocket and clipped a power wire. And when it hit the power wire, spark, I mean, the wire went, woo, woo, started like moving and sparks right at where the wire hit the pole and the transformer and shit. It's just started spark sparking like crazy and i mean like pop and shooting sparks out of us and we all had to scatter to get out of the way and then i shit you not it caught on fire and sparks and the fire went from the pole and the box on the pole to my mother's house all straight across the wire like a flame just like and went across the fucking wire to my mother's house caught there's like a box on the outside of her um house i don't know if it's a trans I don't, I don't know anything about that shit but there's a box on the side of the house it, that started sparking and caught on fire and then phew, all the lights went out for about for my entire street so that's like what it's like eight blocks or something and then on the up and down streets too so like i don't know a mile of houses all went dark because i hit that damn power wire with a football and my mother when the, <laughs> the and some and it set my house on fire my mom's house was on fire and when the fire truck showed up, my mother immediately snitched on me. She said, it was him. It was my son. He did it. <laughs> I love my mom. But damn, mom, you didn't have to do that shit. Anyway. Oh, and then, uh, so that's one thing. And then another thing was when I was down in um, North Carolina, there was a hurricane. And, after, and of course, all the high winds shut the power down and. I don't know if down there for some reason, like everything was on, was it associated with the power? So like, I didn't have any air. I didn't have any water. I don't think, I don't know when it, when the, the power went down is what I'm getting at because of the hurricane. <clears throat> and then 
I remember for like three or four days until they got the power back on, like I didn't have any, I don't think I had any water and I don't know how that, but there was, it was like, I didn't have anything in that house that I was renting or that I was staying in. And I, it was just crazy. It was miserable and it was hot as foul. Oh my goodness. The, the hurricane was exciting. I actually talked about that story. There was a Pelican story in my book about that. The hurricane was exciting as fuck. I, w- I was out in it, but, and then it was, when it was over, there was no power and the, it got humid and it was like 188 degrees and it was like 200% humidity. And it was the most miserable time that I had the whole time that I lived in North Carolina for like a week. <clears throat> the after and then cleaning all the shit up that all the trees that were down and all the everything. But anyway, this is about telephone poles and wires. If you go outside, if you live in an area like I live in, in a city area and you go out on your street and look down the street, just look at all the fucking telephone poles that are just leaning at all kind of different angles and all these crazy, heavy ass, dangerous looking wires just dangling from from across the streets and into the houses it just looks old that is like an old system like i I guarantee if you pulled up a picture of that same street like back in the fucking 50s you'll see the same shit the same fucking leaning over different angle telephone poles with wires that hangling hangling dangling down from them and trees that have grown and like split in the middle to grow around the wires or like and it's just ugly and it doesn't make any sense and we should have been past that by now um this is something that's been bothering me for a long time i'm sick of seeing telephone poles and wires everywhere it just looks like it's 2017 we should have been not had that if you go to any mall and look around, you'll see light poles all over the place to, to light up the fucking parking lots, but you won't see giant wires dangling from the tops of them because they, we have the technology to put the wires in the ground. We've had that technology for a long, long time, and it's time that they start incorporating that into houses and everywhere else. Like, <clears throat> it just makes sense. Like if you were, if you if you ever listen to any of the doomsday prepper shit and all that, they talk a lot about EMPs. If another major superpower country wanted to come in and fuck our whole shit up, all they have to do is they don't even have to nuke us. All they have to do is set off a nuke in the atmosphere above our country, and it will literally shut down the electrical grid for the entire country because all of our wires are exposed. An EMP just basically overloads electrical systems. And if you set it off in the environment or in the atmosphere, all the electricity will amplify because of the shit and all that. But anyway, it will immediately fry our entire, and our whole country would be down and then everybody would eat each other like quickly. But what I'm getting at is that's one major reason why we should have been had in ground wire shit. So you think about it instead of having, Telephone poles looking like shit, leaning all over the place and cutting down trees to make telephone poles, by the way, um, have uh, all new construction from here on out should have to, like, I don't know, engineers and whoever fucking lays this shit out should have in, have it in the plans to have channels in the ground that run along every street. And imagine how much it would be safer because nobody has to get on fucking ladders to fix any wires. Everything will be right there. It, you can the channel that the shit's in can be shielded from. Uh, oh, and also sun flares. People's power goes out all the time because of, of sun flares. It, that is something that actually happens. You can look that up. <clears throat> the EMP shit is you know they say that that can happen, but the sun flares fuck shit up every day. Well, not every day, but all the time. Like you can look on on the web NASA's website and see sun flares coming at us, and then read news stories about places that have blackouts and shit because of sun flares and people getting all weird and act crazy. It fucks with our brains too, but make channels that run along every street, have the wires in the channels, have a special lock that only utility people can open it up with. It'd make it super easy for them to access the shit to fix the shit. They can lie every, or they can lay every fucking wire, the cable, the whatever, electrical, the phone lines, the internet, whatever, all that shit, the coax, the, fiber optic 
all of it can be have its own little section in the fucking thing. And it'll be the standard. It'll be shielded. We don't have to look at dangling wires anymore like this is the fucking 70s or the 50s or whenever that shit first came out. And what else did I want to say about that? Oh, and the weather. We don't have to worry about weather outage. We don't have to worry about people throwing footballs and knocking the power out for everybody. We don't, And then all your fucking groceries going bad in your refrigerator. We don't have to worry about hurricanes blowing down wires. We don't have to worry about traffic accidents running into poles and knocking down wires. Like we... It, we should have been rid of that shit. Uh, let's move on from that shit, people. Let's uh, let's make that happen. Talk to your congressman. <laughs> oh, and also, it, it'll clean up the view on my mother's street. If, like I said, if you step outside and look down the street, it just looks like shit. It looks like what the fuck? What what? Aren't we past this shit? It'll clean up the sky view. We can look at the trees in the sky instead of wires. Like look. Look at down the street and look at all the signs and the poles and the wires and just the horse shit. Let's clean it up. We can start by getting rid of the telephone poles and the dangling wires. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. one more thing. Less bird shit on cars. <laughs> that, that doesn't sound like it's a thing, but it's a thing. My the, the next door neighbor at my mother's house in the back came to me and asked me if we would mind if he dug a parking spot out it's impossible to describe it so like if you come out of our house and go down to the end of our driveway and look left his apartment building sits right at the end of our driveway the only place for him to park is right out front of his house which is in an alley and right there is a fucking <laughs> there's a bunch of power wires and birds just live there on those wires and they just shit on his car constantly every single day and he asked us if he could basically basically do some heavy construction to build a fucking parking spot, like going halfway up our driveway, but on his side. And we were like, yeah, whatever, do what you got to do. But it, what I'm saying is it was that big of a deal. Like the birds constantly shit on his fucking car because of the, the wires right there. So yeah, we need to get rid of the wires and the poles. Um, I hope you're with me on this and spread the word so we can make it happen some kind of way. <clears throat> I don't know. All right. So, um, also, let's get rid of laundromat machines that still use quarters. Like I know some of them have the, the system where you could, you know, you charge up the card and use that. And that should be the standard. That should be everywhere. Like I've my building right now. Where do you guys get quarters? If you don't, if you had, if you were using laundromats, do they have a quarter machine in the laundromat you go to? Because the last place that I was, the last apartment that I was in, the, the, the place didn't have a quarter machine. So we had to go find quarters wherever we could. And the closest place was a laundromat down the street, which was always out of quarters, I guess, because everybody from my fucking apartment complex was going down there getting the quarters. And then the grocery store in that complex didn't want to give out their quarters anymore. They just, and it was just a pain in the dick. Like, and, and people probably stick quarters up their ass. Like money's nasty. And I'm just tired of, the whole quarter situation. We need to get rid of that. Like they should have, they started fucking moving, changing the machines over. Let's get them all changed over. Now there's no reason that still have laundry mats with machines to take quarters. That's old shit. Let's get new shit. Uh, what else? I don't want to say anything about that. <clears throat> I need to hydrate again. Um, Next thing I want to talk about, next thing up on the chopping block is champion beauty. All right, so basically, there's a lot of beautiful women in the world. There's a really lot of really beautiful, really famous women. And I just want to talk about a couple of them here and there and now and again. So last week, it was Salma Hayek, who will forever be a all-time champion beauty to me. <clears throat> or last week, last episode, sorry. This episode, uh, this this episode's champion beauty is uh, the one and only Miss Scarlett Johansson. I want to take this time to acknowledge <laughs> just how fine her beautiful ass is. Um, so the first thing that I ever saw her in on TV was that movie called The Island. 
and she was young in that. I'm guessing she was like 20 or something like that. And I remember specifically, there's only been a couple times in my life when I have said this to myself, but I saw that movie and I was staring at her and I said, that is the finest woman I've ever seen in my life. Young Scarlett Johansson was unbeatably beautiful, in my opinion. Now, see, that's me, my... That doesn't have anything to do... I want to just lay this out there. That doesn't have anything to do with race or... Like, anything specific. It was just like, I look at her, and she was so attractive to me that it was just, like, overwhelming. Like, what the fuck? And there's only been a couple other times in my life when I've thought that about and, like, said it to myself. Like, that's the finest thing I've ever seen in my life. Scarlett Johansson is, is was, I think, the first one. I think Beyonce was the second one, and that was on one of her album covers. Like one of the Destiny Childs covers or something, I was like, damn, that is like the perfect looking woman right there. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't like weave. <laughs> when I found out that Beyonce's hair was weave, I thought she was just a mixed race girl with with good hair. But she's, I, I read that she spends like $30,000 on her weaves. I, I can't stand weave. I hate it. I wish it was never invented. Um, I've been with girls with weave, and I go to, I love hair. I, I go to run my fingers through their hair, and and you, ah! and your fingers get caught and shit, all kind of fucking knots and fucking uh, t- t- zippers and shit back there, glue. and uh, Nah, I'm not with that. I would so much rather see you with whatever your real hair looks like than some other shit sewn in your head. That's just my opinion. Sorry. But anyway, so that's why uh, Beyonce, I kind of took back my damn she's the finest thing I've ever seen when like when I saw that she had weave I just kind of forgot about her <clears throat> in that category I mean she's still you know a dope performer and all that but honestly lately I've been listening to more Solange than Beyonce because Beyonce is just so commercial I don't know I feel like everything every song that she makes is just was pumped out of a machine that knows what everybody wants to hear and Solange, Solange's shit is like straight out of the back of her weird ass head I don't mean to say that in a bad, but she's just, she's, she's different. I love it. Like I said, that's why I love that key, Kilo Keish chick. Um, but yeah, Solange is definitely, definitely a different, <laughs> a different type of broad. Anyway, um, Scarlett Johansson was, she, she was the first girl I believe that I ever saw that I said is the finest woman I've ever seen. And she's still so gorgeous that it's distracting to me but here's what makes it even better she she's so good looking that it's totally distracting but at the same time she has the the either the acting ability or just that natural female power to make me look where she wants me to look so it's like she knows how good looking she is but she's like no but watch me do this and I'm like, okay, yeah, you, you can act too. Perfect example. Um, nah, I, I'm not even gonna get, gonna get into it, all her acting skill and all that. But she's a good actor, a great actor to me, and um, she can sing too. I don't know if everybody knows that, but <clears throat> I would never expect Scarlett Johansson to be able to sing just because she can't scream. Like in certain movies, like The Island, when she tried to scream, her voice just goes, ah! so I would have never thought that she would sing, but she can really sing. Like she can really, she could be a singer if, if that if she decided to do that instead of an actress. Like you can Google it on YouTube or YouTube it. There's songs with her and they're really good and she can sing. She's just a fucking phenom of talent and as good as a woman can look. As far as I'm concerned, she don't have like that crazy porn body or nothing like that. She looks real. She looks like she's comfortable. Like you would just like to spoon her in bed or just like hold her and just wake up to that pretty ass face. And that I love the way her nose is shaped. Like it's like kind of upturned at the end and her lips. <laughs> anyway, I'm not trying to be weird, but she it, to me is an all time champion beauty. And she also has something that not a lot of women have, which is the ability to turn her, her sexualness on and like whenever she wants and it be like 
super effective if, if you get what, I follow, what I'm trying to say. So in other words, like there's a lot of chicks who pretend to be sexy and they like if you watch ever watch porn, they go, uh, yeah, you like that? You know, like and it, it, that never does anything for me. I don't like anything fake like that. Scarlett Johansson in the movie Don John. If you watch the part where her and uh, the dude from in, uh, Inception, whoever his name is, John something, uh, the dude from um, Inception and The Walk and the one with Bruce Willis where he goes back in time to kill himself, his old self, uh, Looper, that dude is in the movie Don John with Scarlett Johansson. And there's a scene when they're in the hallway and she's trying to get him she to, she's using her sexiness to manipulate him to do what she wants and she's just like yeah baby would you do that for me baby and blah, blah, blah. and he's just like huh yeah oh, God, yeah whatever you want yeah and they kind of gr- he grinds on her and she like throws her ass on him a little bit and then she's just like yeah well, come for me baby just go ahead and come and he's like what yeah oh, oh, oh and he comes and i was as i'm watching that i'm like if i was him i would have came like I, they weren't fucking there was no sex he was just like dry humping her but she like she she's that good like she can just turn she can be one minute where you're listening to her talk and she's intelligent you're like damn this this broad got a brain in her head and then she could just flip it and have and have you just do whatever she wants you to do with her sex game and it's it's just so powerful honestly if i was him and in that scene i would have probably come on myself because it was that damn sexy to me. Her sex appeal is like that. And then on top of it, if I had sat and watched that scene twice in a row, like on my computer, like I watched before this to th- to remember what I wanted to say in this fucking podcast, if I had watched it twice in a row, I would have probably busted a nut on myself just watching it. She's got sexy down to a T is what I'm saying. She has, it's like a switch that she can flip on and just, melt you with her sexiness and that's that's a quality and there's another woman who can do that and it's um well there's a lot there's not there's some not a lot but i'm gonna say amanda seyfried or whatever however you pronounce her last name seyfried 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 amanda seyfried she can do that too like i saw her in some movie where she was sitting at a bar talking to some dude and was, was totally ice queen that like fuck you get away from me but then she realized she wanted something from him and then bam she switched she was like oh i can I, yeah i need this dude turned it on like a switch and if i was that dude and he f- totally fell for it and if i was that dude i would have totally fell for it too like she just can turn on sex appeal that that, that seems so powerful and real that she could manipulate a motherfucker with that shit so um, yeah, in conclusion, Scarlett Johansson is one of my all time favorite, beautiful women in the world. And, um, shit, I think she just went through a divorce. I hope this show gets me famous and I can move to fucking Hollywood and <laughs> maybe we can meet and I can see if really, if she really is nice to spoon with. All right. <clears throat> uh, but you know what? The, the, I think about that and I think about like dating, like a uber famous woman like that, like a Scarlett Johansson or like a J Lo. Like when I look, I used to really, really be into J Lo. I used to love her music, and I still, th- you know, I still think she's she's the shit. But um, it just dawned on me that a woman who is that busy all the time and and has is that adorned all the time and and just drawn all over the place, like that kind of a a um drive for success and 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 the talent to get you there like where where does that leave you (laughs) and i don't even mean like as being like emasculated or anything like that i'm just saying like relationship wise that's why i wonder if that's the reason why like j-lo has been through so many divorces and oh i don't know how many divorces but it just seems like every time i turn on tv she's dating somebody else and i'm like that woman is, is a dime why the fuck can't she keep a dude well i don't even mean to say it like that like what just i i just think that being rich and famous is a real real um bear trap as far as relationships go i think that you you i think it fucks shit up 
especially with a woman who's so driven. I, I just think that she's not going to have much time for a relationship. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't see how you fit that in. I wouldn't want to be going all around the world. And I mean, it would go the same way for a dude, or a female with a rich dude. Like I, I wouldn't ever want to be like behind the scenes waiting for my woman to. Go. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Like, that, that wouldn't be a normal relationship. I don't know what that would be like. <clears throat> I don't know. Anyway. All right, on to the next thing. Hygiene tip, quickly, because I'm running out of time here. About 56 minutes. Um, if you don't use lotion, you should. Um, white people, too. Black people already know about lotion. White people, you should use lotion. If you use lotion, and you are, if you already do use lotion, you know that there's different kinds of lotions. The two main kind that I use are face lotion and body lotion. Uh, you don't want to use body lotion on your face because body lotion has a lot of like scents and, and it's really thick and it'll like clog your your face skin is different than your hand and your arm and the rest of your body. And body lotion will clog your pores up quickly and it'll just it'll make your face feel heavy. And so uh, face lotion is lighter and doesn't have all the the shit like you might break out from body lotion on your face because it has perfumes and dyes and whatever i don't know so if you use lotion you uh, if you use lotion you probably on a regular basis you probably have more than one kind so my hygiene tip is use baby lotion which i do whenever i i, I try to all the time whenever especially when i think about it but um i don't Always have money for, or whatever, you know, it's not expensive, but baby lotion, Aveeno baby lotion is light enough for your face, but also thick enough for the rest of your body that you want to put it on your hands, your elbows, wherever it gets ashy, that you want to keep soft, <clears throat> your ears, your head, whatever, back of your neck. And it won't break you out. It's because it's for babies. Baby's skin is sensitive and soft, but also you want to use it on all the baby, the face and the, the, the arm, the whole body. So it's it's like a perfect mix formula. It's, it doesn't have the dyes and the shit that it's like hypoallergenic for to, to keep, you know, for, for uh, sensitive skin. And it's the right thickness. And it also smells good. It smells for, I don't know if you ever use baby lotion. All baby products just have like a fresh smell to them. That's why babies always smell good. You pick up a baby like, oh, you smell like a baby. Baby lotion smells awesome. It's great for your face. It's great for the rest of your body. It costs the same. It's not loaded with all the heavy shit. Aveeno makes a great one. Um, and while I'm on the subject of that, you, you do that because you want soft skin. And it also protects you from the cold and shit. Like my, your, your skin will crack up and shit in the cold if it's dry. Like your cuticles, that shit will start bleeding and it'll hurt. So you should lotion up. And plus it's nice whenever if you have somebody who who you love, who you're going to be touching all the time, they're going to be touching you, you know, have your skin soft, dudes. So what if you work in a lumber yard like I used to? When you go home, slap on some lotion for your lady so so that it doesn't feel like she's rubbing a block of fucking wood when she just puts her soft body up against yours in the bed. <clears throat> and also hydrate. Mm. <sighs> Drink lots of water. Water drinking water automatically makes your skin softer. Um, and oh, I don't know if people know this or not, but I don't get hangovers anymore because I drink a lot of water whenever I drink. Whenever I if I if I drink doesn't matter beer, liquor, whatever, but I drink water with it the whole night, and then before I go to bed, I drink I guzzle at least a whole bottle of water, if not two, and then as soon as I wake up in the morning, I just start crushing bottles of water. And you'll never have a hangover again because 99% of a hangover is dehydration. It just makes you feel like fucking ass. So drink more water, people, especially when you're drinking. A good fucking tip. So this is going into a super tip. A good tip for drinking is to, for every drink that you have, drink a water. That's not even enough. Like you have to drink, I think, twice as much water as you, um, as the alcohol that you put in your body. Like so for every beer you have to drink two bottle waters to put back the water that you, you you lose from drinking a beer but 
if you just drink one water for every beer or every fucking mixed drink or whatever, it helps. Like, because who wants hangovers? Oh, my goodness. I've had hangovers that where I haven't been able to get out of bed for an entire day. <clears throat> and I don't ever want that again. Anyway, so next segment. You're an asshole if you do this. Um, I'm a truck driver. I drive at night. Um, I speed a lot. <laughs> Most of the time when I'm driving, I'm going as fast as the fucking truck will, will go because I'm in a hurry. Um, the way that I know if cops are behind me or not is by the lights of the vehicles because I'm, I try to stay up on what the current year's cop cars are in all the areas. Um, you're an asshole if you buy a cop car because if you're behind me in your fucking car that is the same model as the ones that the cops use, I think you're a cop because all I have to go on is the shape of your, your, your headlights. And so I automatically slow down. So you're costing me time. And then I'll, and then I slow down to the speed limit and then the car behind me hangs back there for a while and then eventually comes up next to me and moves past. And I say, Oh shit, that's a purple fucking Chevy Malibu. Chevy Malibu is the cop car. Don't buy cop cars. Buy a fucking Hyundai or a Accord or if you got money, get a Lexus or a Beamer or something. Don't buy Chevy Malibus and don't buy fucking Ford Explorers. Those are two cop cars. Leave them to the cops. Quit fucking with my night. I'm just trying to get my job done and, and drive as fast as hell as I want. <laughs> Stop fucking with me psychologically like that. Don't buy cop cars. Um, yeah, so that's it. You're an asshole if you buy a cop car. Why the fuck would you buy a fuck? Oh, I mean, whatever. I guess the Chevy Malibu, they won 700 awards over the last 10 years. And they, uh, JD Power. Those commercials are gay. I hate those commercials. And I don't mean gay in a fucking, whatever. Uh, so that's hygiene tip and you're an asshole. All right. <clears throat> All right, the final fucking index card here. We're at an hour and three minutes. Good, good timing. This is a serious topic. And, whoa, nice segue, too. So, the serious topic for today is driving. Um, here's what I want to say about driving in America. I used to live in Germany for two years. And everybody knows that over in Germany they have uh, the Autobahn where you can drive as fast as you want. Um, or as fast as your car can go. In certain sections. It's not all uh, unlimited speed driving. But hold on. <clears throat> But um, there's a lot of a lot of places where you can drive as fast as you want. Like I talked about this in a book. Uh, every vehicle that I that I drove over in Germany, I rented a lot of cars. I borrowed a lot of people's cars. I had, I owned one to three different cars. Um, three, two or three different cars. Um, every single one of them I took out on an autobahn and I drove it as fast as it would go. And I went. I think I went like 150. A whole bunch of times, but I might have been going faster than that. Um, but the needles in the cars were buried, so I really don't know how fast I was going. But I just kept going until it, the car just fucking wouldn't do anymore. Every time, not every. I'm just saying I've done that in every vehicle that I drove over there, for the most part. And I'm gonna say this: the two years that I drove over there, and um, that I lived over there and drove over there in Germany, I may have seen four car accidents I saw like four car accidents this week <laughs> driving for work I saw I literally saw a fucking car upside down and a woman walking away from it just this past Tuesday I believe um I just saw like a look like a four car pile up last night and over in Germany where you can drive as fast as you want I hardly ever saw any fucking cars or, or car accidents. And to top it off or to make it even more um, interesting, there are a lot of people like there's two kind of cars over there. I feel like I'm talking weird. <clears throat> there are basically two categories of cars over there. There's like little e economy cars, like little tiny smart cars and shit. And a million zillion people own them. And then there's big, fucking Audis and, and Beamers and, and uh, shit like that that the wealthier people 
drive. I don't think I ever saw any of the little little cars crashed. But I saw a few of the Audis and the Beamers crashed. And that was it. Like I may have seen like a crashed Porsche one time or something. Like they're just better drivers over there in Germany. And the reason for there's a reason for it. The reason is they take it more serious. You have to I don't remember specifically what my, my ex girl I had a German ex girlfriend over there and she could drive her ass off. Like I remember going we were on our way on a snowboarding trip to Switzerland and Everybody in the car except for her just got drunk and passed out. And I woke up at one time and we're going 140 something miles an hour. She's just fucking rolling. And I felt totally fucking comfortable and went back to sleep. And the car was a stick shift. All the cars over there were stick shifts. I mean, mostly. She could drive. The reason is because over there, you have to start your driver training early. And it takes a long time to get your driver's license. And they charge you a lot of money. Like, I don't know how much it costs, but it's like a couple grand to get your license. And it takes like from when you're in like 10th grade until you're like 20 or something. I don't know, but it's uh, that's an exaggeration, but it's something like that. And we need to have that kind of shit here, period. Um, in my opinion, driver training needs to be 100% started in school when you're like 15 and it needs to go for until you graduate. Like when you graduate school, that should be when you get your driver's license and the shit needs to be mandatory and it need to be needs to be standardized across the entire country. And um, not only that, but on top of it, they need to teach how to drive a stick and an automatic because of emergencies. If something happens and there's a bunch of people and and you are the only one who who can who's not hurt and we need you to hurry up and get everybody out of here before something else happens and the only vehicle is a van and it's a stick shift we need to know that everybody can 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 step up and do that it's not that big of a deal to learn how to drive a stick um like there's a minimum amount of competency that anyone who we can trust with a vehicle needs to have you see what i'm saying like it's not that big of a request for someone to be able to drive a stick it's not that hard i need to know that you can we need to know that you can do at least that so that the rest of us can trust our lives with you out there in this moving weapon of mass destruction (laughs) coming down towards me at high speeds that could just wipe me and my whole family out at any time i i want driver training to be taken way more serious over here um, they need to teach you how to do more things. Like I, when I went through my driver training, they didn't teach you about um, emergencies, evasive maneuvers, driving in inclement weather, snow and like high winds and shit. They didn't teach you none of that. They didn't, they didn't teach you about hydroplaning. Do you know how, what to do if you're hydroplaning? Do you know what hydroplaning means? <clears throat> they didn't teach you how to merge and, and, and exit from highway speeds properly. They didn't teach like they. I mean, I remember the the big thing about driver training was parallel parking. What the fuck is that? They need to teach you how to. Anyway, they need to teach motorcycle awareness. They need to teach you how to prevent yourself from going into road rage, how to stay calm. They need to teach how to do basic shit like change tires. And they need to teach basic knowledge of how cars work. Like, do you even know what a transmission is like? We need to expect we need to expect more out of people. Like we shouldn't have a nation of dumb dumbs. Um, and they need to teach you how to drive different size vehicles, so that if you have to rent a U-Haul, we the rest of us know that you're not going to to wipe out our parked cars because you don't you're not aware of how wide the thing is. Before before you get your license, you should know all that shit. You should it should take years. It should be a big part of school, and people should come out well qualified to drive everyone like we have so many people out here i see it i'm a driver like i said and you wouldn't believe the the shit that i saw one time that's another thing they need to they need to scare the shit out of people about texting and driving i mean we're all guilty of it but uh and i hey they need to scare the shit out of me about it too um i pulled up to a red light one time one night at night and a car pulled I was sitting at a red light and I looked a car pulled up next to me on my left and the whole inside of the fucking car was lit up 
and it got my attention, like from my peripheral vision. I looked down as I was in my work truck. I looked down into the straight into this car through the, the passenger window and the whole inside of the car was lit up because the woman behind the wheel had two full size fucking like iPhone seven plus like the big one with the nine, nine inch screen. She had two of them, one in each hand and was texting on both with her thumbs. Her thumbs were moving on both of them. She was typing on both phones, two separate text messages at the same time. And the brightness was up on both phones and had lit up the whole entire fucking thing. I was like, what the fuck? She was texting two, two phones at once. And then the light turned green and she pulled forward, driving, steering the car with her knee, looking down at these phones and just drove away. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Like, I mean, I do some reckless shit, but damn. Yeah, they need to scare the shit out of people. New drivers. Um, as far as they need to, when I was in uh, driver's ed training, they showed, um, videos of like kids getting hit by school buses and shit. And it scared the shit out of us. And I think it, it, it helped at least. So yeah, driver training. That's my serious topic for the day for this, uh, this show. And with that, I'm going to wrap this thing up. I hope you heard some interesting things that, uh, you'll think about for a while today. I hope you were entertained. Thank you again for coming. Please go and uh, check out my book. It's these ones are mine. It's on Amazon and Kindle. Uh, paperback and ebook. Um, see you next time. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, be good. Take care of yourself, and always try to help other people. Peace. <laughs>